Hi guys, it's Hinda. Welcome to Cooking Fantasies. In today's video, we're going to be making one of my favorite cakes ever. We're going to be making red velvet cake. And since it's February, the month of love, and with Valentine's Day coming, we're going to be making it in a heart shape, which is optional, of course, and you can make it in any other shape that you like. And I can guarantee you, your search is over. This is the recipe you've been looking for. It's a perfect, delicious and moist red velvet cake with an amazing frosting that tastes amazing and holds nicely. And like always, the full list of the ingredients you're gonna be needing in both the grams and the cups measurements, I'm gonna be leaving you down in the description box, as well as a link to the full printable recipe. And before we start, if you are new to the channel, we make a lot of delicious and easy recipes here, so make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell to get notified whenever a new video is up and let's get baking. And of course, we're gonna start by preheating the oven to 175 degrees Celsius, that's 347 degrees Fahrenheit. And the first thing I'm going to do is start by sifting all the dry ingredients. I will start by sifting the all-purpose flour and sweeten cocoa powder and baking powder. Then I'm going to use a whisk to mix everything together and leave it on the side for later. Next thing I'm going to add my white vinegar to the buttermilk and mix them together and leave them also on the side for later. I'm going to beat the eggs with the sugar and vanilla extract. You can also use vanilla infused sugar if you prefer to. And I'm going to be using a stand mixer. You can totally use a hand mixer if you prefer to. And you're going to beat them long enough until the mixture doubles in size and thickens as you see. And then I'm going to add the vegetable oil and keep mixing everything together. Once all the oil is well incorporated, I'm going to add the buttermilk to which I have already added the white vinegar and again mix everything until it's well incorporated. And finally, I'm going to be adding the dry ingredients that I have already prepared, all-purpose flour with unsweetened cocoa powder and baking powder. I'm going to be adding this in two goes and just make sure to give it a quick whisk before you start the sand mixer if you don't wanna have the flour flying everywhere. And when adding the dry ingredients, you don't want to over mix your batter, just enough till it's incorporated and you don't see any lumps. And only at this point, I'm going to be adding the red food coloring. I do this at the end because you want to see how much color you need. Not all the unsweetened cocoa powders have the same degree of color. The one I'm using is quite dark, so I'm going to be adding a lot of red coloring. I used the... Um, gel food coloring from Wilton, but you can use even the fluid one or powder, it's totally up to you. Just wanna add it at the end while mixing until you're happy with the color. To prepare my baking tin, I brush them with some margarine before adding the parchment paper because I want the parchment paper to stay and stick to the tin. I will also do the same for the sides and to the sides I'm also going to be adding a little bit of flour because I don't want my cake to stick and I'm going to be removing it easier later on. I will do this for all my baking tins before I add in my butter. Since I'm dividing my butter and using these small baking tins, I'm going to be needing exactly between 19 and 20 minutes for the cakes to be ready. If you are baking the whole butter in one big um, cake tin, you are going to need a little bit longer. I'm going to be leaving all these details down in the description box to adjust your baking time. So again, how I did it, I measured my butter, I removed a little bit for a really thin layer for the crumbs and the decoration. And for the rest of the butter, I divided into three equal parts that I baked separately in these baking tins to have different layers. Another option is to simply divide your butter into three parts, bake them, trim a little bit from the top and use it for the crumbs. As soon as my cakes are ready, I'm going to wait for them to slightly warm before I unmold them. And as you see, they unmold really easy. So I'm going to flip them over and slowly peel off the parchment paper. If you are going to bake your cake in one big tin, please unmold it while it's warm and then wait for it to totally cool, even better refrigerated before you slice it into as many layers as you want. 
and you can use the trimmings or the small uh, little thin layer that I baked separately and I'm going to use a food processor or just your fingers to make nice crumbs for decorating the cake. And to make the perfect grape cheese frosting for a perfect red velvet cake, we have a secret ingredient which is dried milk. And we're gonna start by adding the cream cheese to the mixing bowl. The cream cheese shouldn't be very cold, but neither too warm. So it should be in room temperature. And I'm going to be adding the cream cheese, icing sugar, and the dried milk. I will also be adding the vanilla extract at this point, but it doesn't matter, you can add it later. I will use a spatula to mix everything together really quickly before I start beating, because I don't want the icing sugar to fly everywhere. And again, you can use either a sand mixer or a hand mixer. And beat everything together for about one minute, just enough to combine all the ingredients. And I'm going to be adding my butter in room temperature to the cream cheese mixture until everything is well combined and you have a smooth texture. And this is why it was important to use cream cheese in room temperature, because if the cream cheese is cold, as soon as you add the butter, it's going to harden and curdle and you're gonna have little pieces of butter that are not nicely incorporated into the cream. If this happened to you, don't worry, all you have to do is heat the bowl, because this already happened to me. You're gonna have to heat the bowl either with a hairdryer or with a hot towel, a towel that you have soaked in hot water. This will make the temperature of the cream drop to room temperature, the butter will melt again and it will be nicely incorporated. Between five to six minutes depending on how strong your stand mixer or the hand mixer you are using and you should stop when you have a nice thick consistency that's also not yellow but bright in color. And now that everything is ready, we're gonna start assembling the cake. I will first place my cream in a piping bag if you wanna decorate the cake the way I did it. If not, you can simply use a spatula for layers of cream. On the top of the cream layer, I'm going to be adding only in the center about two to three tablespoons of the cake crumbs. This will help the cream hold the shape and for the cake layers also to stay moist. Repeat the same step three times until my cake is assembled as easy as that. And like I told you, this cream cheese frosting is really nice. It holds shape so you can even use another piping tip to make flowers or any kind of design that you like. As soon as you finish assembling the cake, I'm going to place it in the fridge for a few minutes for it to hold shape and it's ready. My all-time favorite cake. Not only does it look amazing, but it tastes really delicious and I'm sure you will like it. It has the perfect texture of cake, so moist and rich and delicious, not too chocolatey, but just enough so you can call it a red velvet cake and you have the perfect cream cheese frosting. I hope you like today's video. I hope you will be trying out this recipe and I'm sure you will love it. But if you do, please let me know how it turned out. Let me know in the comment section. You could also share your uh, pictures with me on Instagram. I'm always happy to have your feedback. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and see you soon in your recipe. Happy baking and happy Valentine's Day.